In Inception, Christopher Nolan's 2010 film, Hans Zimmer's score is vast and expansive. There are about two hours of music, and given the complexity of the convoluted plot, the soundtrack is actually very simple. There are different levels. There is big, epic, flashy music, and there is small, intimate, discreet music. There is music that starts out small and ends up big, and big music that ends up small in a way. An electric guitar marks a repetitive, methodical pattern that is used in the moments that precede an important action. Preparation for an action. Yeah. Stop. Planning. Present study his mannerisms and so on and so forth. So now in the first layer of the dream, I can impersonate Browning. Or prior training. Footsteps. Then the next level down, we feed him. I will create something for myself. It culminates in the execution of the plan. and continues throughout its development. Mr. Fisher, right? Pleasure to see you again, Rod Green from Marketing. I it is a music that shows security and firmness. His music warns me. And then when the van hits the barrier of the bridge, that should be unmistakable. But when this music subtly begins to fade, to lose its identity, then it gives the impression that not everything is assured. Did Eames add any features? I don't think I should tell you. If Maul finds out... We don't out, have then... time for this. Did he add anything? And later, together with the other music, it expresses an almost total lack of control. That's the antechamber outside the strong room. Does the strong room have any windows? Well, I mean, it wouldn't be very strong if it did. Well, let's hope Fisher likes what he finds in there. Edith Piaf's song is used to warn the dreamer that the dream is about to end. How'd it go? Not good. It is a clearly recognizable musical choice and special enough because it relates to one of the most important dramatic levels of the film, that of regret. Oh. The song is in direct contrast to Cobb's personal situation as he struggles to do what the song says, make peace with the past, put regret behind him, and try to move on. When it plays, it is meant to warn that the end of the dream is near. But since time passes more slowly in a dream than in reality, and to make each level of the dream stretch out further, Hans Zimmer uses a different musical device. First, it uses music that transcends the song to a crescendo of low strings, repeating their chord at the same pace at a much slower tempo. It somewhat mimics how the song would sound slowed down in the dream levels, much more serious and impactful. Secondly, the same idea is developed to form a broad, tense, and powerful music. A part of it is presented at the beginning, which is repeated in some moments. You play by my rules. Ah, oh, yes, but you see, Mr. Sato, not in your dream, or in mine. But it is only the basis of a spectacular, intense, and very extensive music, which takes absolute prominence in the last part of the movie, providing great loads of adrenaline and tension. It is a music that exists only in the different levels of the dream. 
Some characters have music associated with them, and all of them have a melancholic, sad air. Saito is the one who sets the whole movie in motion. In the flash forward at the beginning, which is actually the end of the movie, there is an atmospheric music. Are you here to kill me? It is solemn music, like the promise he made to Cobb that he wants to keep. I've seen one before, many, many years ago. It belonged to a man I met in half remember dream. Obviously, the music comes in when he makes the promise that he can bring Cobb home and bring his children back. Do you want to take a leap of faith? Or become an old man filled with regret? waiting to die alone. And when he is badly wounded in the first level of the dream, he tells him that he will keep his promise. I still own the arrangement. I appreciate that, Saito. But when you wake up, you won't even remember that we had an arrangement. He finally appears, as is obvious, in the continuation of the original conversation at the end, in which he finally fulfills the promise. God. We were young men together. Robert Fisher provides the only music that is not directly about Cobb. It focuses on his relationship with his father and shows in a very subtle way his anguish and insecurity, his pain at having disappointed his father. And I can only make out one word. Disappointed. This music brings out his most intimate and vulnerable side. I know you were disappointed. I couldn't be you. But it is brought to an open and very emotional resolution. I was disappointed. Did you try? One short motif refers to Cobb's memory of his children. How are you doing, huh? Good. Okay, okay. It is a motif that evokes sadness and also an almost ghostly distance. Those kids, your grandchildren, they're waiting for their father to come back home. That's their reality. And this job, this last job, that's how I get there. It's my son, James. He's digging for something, maybe a worm. I need to see their faces one last time. Cobb remembers his children and his wife, Mal. Oh, what are you doing here? I thought you might be missing me. You know that I am. It is a musical theme charged with nostalgia for a shared time that will never return. It appears several times with variations, some melancholy. Tell me, do the children miss me? I can't imagine. Some mysterious. You don't understand. These are moments I regret. They're memories that I have to change. Just and some very disturbing. All right, just step back inside now. Come on. No. I'm going to jump and you're coming with me. No, I'm not. The most important of its appearances is when Cobb explains to Ariadne what he and Mal have been through together. It represents Cobb's nostalgia and coexists either separately or merged with the other major theme, the main theme, which we will call the totem theme, symbolizing his guilt. What will be the great main theme is presented here, four notes in a germinal state. On you all the time that no one else knows. Like a coin? No, it needs to be more unique than that. Like this is a loaded die. 
It makes a first reference to the totem, the spinning top that is used to know whether one is in a dream or in reality, but it is immediately linked to Cobb. We will soon learn that the totem was Mal's before she died, something for which Cobb was and feels responsible. The theme takes shape and form and increasingly occupies more relevant places than the theme I explained earlier, that of nostalgia. Arthur told me she passed away. Nostalgia and guilt coexist in Cobb and in the music, but the guilt is stronger, more bitter. And we crawl together. At the same time that Cobb is dealing with guilt, the world she built with Mal is crumbling. It is the place she finally mistook for reality and from which she had to wake up. We'll be together. How could you bring her here, Dom? What is this place? Tell us we were you suspend our anniversary. Train that will take you far away. James and Philippa are waiting for us. You know where you hope this train will take you. They're waiting they for us. For sure. Whoa! Cobb shows Ariadne limbo. When he confronts Mal and explains what he did, the theme is in its simplest form, as there is a showing of their awakening back to reality. you continue to believe your world wasn't real. When Mal reminds her again of their promise to grow up together, and he replies that they already grew up together during the 50 years they were trapped in limbo, the meaning of the theme changes again. They were in an unreal world, but they lived it as if it were real. The music here is charged with pain and regret but also with love. Cobb says to Saito, This world is not real. And from that moment on, the theme reappears and grows, becoming a new theme, liberated, majestic, in an epic crescendo that brings Cobb home, healed and redeemed, determined to put his guilt behind him, and motivated by love to begin a new life. From now on, it is music for hope.